today. Thank you. Thank you for having me this afternoon. Yes. At short notice. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it was very short notice. Yes. Now, just to understand you a little bit more, who is David, an Adventist? Tell us a little bit about your background as an Adventist. Yes, my name is David Kenani Maraga. I come from Yamira County. My home is at a place known as Ronga. That's where I went to primary school. Mm -hmm. I went to secondary school at Maranda High School, mm -hmm. KCI School, mm -hmm. then the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. After University of Nairobi, I worked in Akuru as a, uh, a lawyer in private practice for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in, on, in October 2003, I was uh, appointed a judge of the High Court and posted to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. From Mombasa to Nakuru, Nakuru to Nairobi. Now I'm a judge of the Court of Appeal. I'm in charge of uh, the city in the Exum station of the mm. Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like now you've just found me here because of an assignment. Uh, I mean, I'm doing, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm in, I'm in Nairobi. Other, otherwise, I would ordinarily be in Exum. Oh, okay. Yes. Now, Elder, when did you become an Adventist? Um, I was first baptized in the Adventist Church on 30th of October, 1965. Mm -hmm. But I, I backslid, mm -hmm. came back in 1991. Mm -hmm. I've been in church since 1991. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, many people think that when you, one becomes a lawyer, it's very difficult to balance between your relationship with God and the kind of profession that, that you have taken. How do you manage to strike the balance? For me, it is not difficult at all. Mm -hmm. If you find some things, uh, I mean, some work you're being given, which does not, uh, I mean, does not uh, go along with your faith, you just leave it. Mm -hmm. And and there are quite a few of those things I found during my private practice, offering a lot of money, but I mean, they they were against my faith, so I just left them, mm -hmm. and and I, I had no problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you have a mentor? Uh, that perhaps influenced your faith? Um, I had uh, Pastor Moindi in my local church in Kisi. He's now late. Mm -hmm. He was uh, a wonderful old man. He told you the way it, it was. He never missed his words, and I admired that. Mm -hmm. if, if, I mean, as young boys running to school, if he would find us on the road, he would tell you, so and so, son, this is not right. This is not right. And we would run away when we see him because we, we knew he would tell us on the face. Mm -hmm. And I admired that. Mm -hmm. That was my mentor. Mm -hmm. And of course, there were, other, there were elders who, 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 who taught us how to, to grow up as young people. And I'm ever grateful to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so you have kept your faith at least since 1991 when yes. you got back to the church. Yes. And you have held several responsibilities in yes. the local church. Yes. Uh, one of those being an elder. Yes. When do you find time to actually do your eldership work in the church, even that uh, your work sometimes can take you quite a bit of time? Uh, it's, it's, it's quite challenging for, for uh, quite a while. Uh, like when I was in Mombasa as a judge, I mean a judge of the high court, I, I mean, I, I just set you my time. We we know we want to visit some sick people in a hospital. Uh, I mean, we, we, we arrange with other pa I mean, elders. Get time and, and come. That mm -hmm. is not, uh, for me, that is no time lost. Mm -hmm. No, no, because, I mean, you, you, you go and, uh, especially when you go and pray for somebody sick in a hospital, mm -hmm. and you see the response, the satisfaction you get from there, in my view, does a lot in mm -hmm. my, my, my what, mm -hmm. uh, even my mental frame. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, you find you are, you are able to do your work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Elder, you know, I'm just wondering, do you sometimes, as, as you make decisions in terms of your, the legal issues you handle, mm -hmm. do you invoke God? Do you see God as being, you know, all that it takes for you to make right decisions? Or do you rely more on your intellectual ability? Oh, my. I, I pray every day. Mm -hmm. 
I, I write, I mean, okay, let's, 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 let's be frank. I write, there are the judgments I write, I find I've written. There are others that I'm unable to make up my mind. And I go down on my knees. And sometimes, incredibly, I, I see uh, areas I had not seen before. Mm -hmm. And and I, I come out with the with the with a judgment, mm -hmm. and uh, and so quite a number of those judgments hardly uh, to I mean are appeals <coughs> against them successful. Mm -hmm. Yes. At there times you feel like um, I mean I'm I'm thinking in terms of I know of a number of people that perhaps could be held illegally, and not illegally but wrongly, and um, some of these cases present themselves. And you, you have all the evidence, you know, to show that this is the case. But sometimes I've had of situations where someone is still held for a long time. And in recent, uh, the recent interview you had with the, with the Judicial Service Commission, you did make certain statements that uh, really meant a lot to people perhaps who are longing for justice. Uh, that could be one group of people that are longing for someone to really come to their aid Number two, you also did talk about the poor. And I wanted you to make a comment about this to people who may have uh, been in jail for a long time without their cases being addressed and perhaps being there wrongly. And the poor, the poor and uh, how you would think you think you can help in alleviating the legal needs of the poor. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for the, that question because it's, it's what I do literally every day. Mm. As the judge of the Court of Appeal in judge of Gisum Station, I handle quite a number of what we call criminal appeals. We have uh, appeals from all, all kinds of offenses. Yes. So, uh, and you won't know somebody has been illegally held until you read through the file carefully and you see that, uh, that the evidence against this person was not sufficient to sustain a conviction mm -hmm. when i have done when i have read that and normally we read uh, the files before we go to court uh, for hearing of the appeals when i read and i find i mean i i, I find that there is i mean there's no sufficient evidence this person is uh, unlawfully held those are uh, files i give priority Okay. In fact, I want to deliver judgment, if possible, the following week, mm -hmm. latest. Mm -hmm. And I and I mean, because I, I, my, my conscience tells me, look, this person is not supposed to be in prison, he's supposed to be yes. at home. Mm -hmm. Now, the people I was having in mind when I was being interviewed, we have uh, the Sexual Offences Act. Mm -hmm. And we have very many young people in prison. Part of my work uh, is to go to prison and look at the, I mean, see to the welfare of the prisoners. Mm -hmm. That's that's part of my work. I'm required to visit prisons within my area. Uh, and I do that at an impromptu, uh, I, make, I make impromptu calls. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I know, I mean, if you, if you tell them you are going, they will prepare. <laughs> they will prepare. Uh, okay. So I, I go and, and like once I went, when I was in Mombasa, I went to Undani. And, uh, and, I, and I just walked to where the prisoners sleep. One of them whispered to me that they are not sleeping mm. because of bed bugs. Mm. I took the issue up with the officer in charge and I was, I was, I was very hard on him. Mm. I said, look, these people are prisoners, all right, but surely sleep, they should sleep. Mm. I gave him money and they bought, uh, in, I mean, doom. Mm -hmm. And spread the, the prisoners who are very, very grateful. Mm. The next time I went there, they were very happy. Mm -hmm. I'm, tr I'm trying to tell you that the kind of work we do. Mm. So in prison, I see quite a number of young people who have been sentenced, some to life imprisonment, mm. others to long, long terms. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you ever knew what the, the, the sexual offenses uh, act, or I mean, sentences are, mm -hmm. you will know that they, 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 it's a very, very serious thing. But there are some category of those who actually are a, a problem even to us. And, and, and we have raised that with the judiciary. Uh, something should be done very quickly. Mm -hmm. Here is a young boy 
we are not in any way of course authorizing that or or or, or condoning that mm -hmm. but here is a young boy who is about 18 18 and a few months they, they are lovers with a girl who happens to be just below 18 and is arrested and charged with development yeah the, 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 I mean, the, the shortest the sentence you can get in a, in a situation like that is 15 years and above. Mm -hmm. Of course, those, those who divide very young children go in for life. Mm -hmm. So some of these, uh, the, there, is, there, there, there are provisions in the law that a young boy of about 18, if he had a lawyer and they pleaded his case and said, look, I didn't know this girl was below, seven, I mean, below 18. Mm -hmm. He will get away with it. Mm -hmm. And that's all that he needed to say. Mm -hmm. And he will get away with it. Mm -hmm. So th quite a number of those cases are there and we know it. So, so, we so is it like, just, is it like uh, in most cases, some these people are ignorant? They are ignorant of the provisions of the law. That is in the Sexual Offenses Act. Mm. That if uh, the, the, the young man involved thought that the girl was above 18. That's a perfect defense. That's a perfect defense. But that defense doesn't come unless somebody has a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the government passed an act recently, the Legal Aid Act, mm -hmm. supposed to aid those, uh, those kind of people who are unable mm -hmm. to, to engage lawyers or to pay for their legal services. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I were to be appointed the chief justice, because that comes under the mandate of the chief justice, mm -hmm. that's one uh, issue I would follow uh, seriously to get these people uh, to get legal, legal, legal aid. Mm -hmm. It's not only in criminal cases. By the way, that, that act will help even uh, um, other very poor people with even land cases. Mm -hmm. Very poor widows who have uh, cases in court and we see they are suffering. Mm -hmm. So if that act is passed, those people will now be directed to see lawyers who will be paid by the government mm -hmm. and they will, they, they will get assistance. Okay. So that's what I was referring to. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense really. People yes. need legal representation. Correct. Now, the other issue that uh, you touched on and it made headlines is um, where you say that you will not compromise charge for work. At least that's what the media wrote. Yes. And uh, the subheading says the ardent Sabbath keeper said he could not sit on a Saturday to hear a presidential petition despite the law allowing for it. Mm. And uh, I have two questions on that. Number one is people would argue that, you know, the Bible says if a cow fell into a pit, uh, you can rescue it. And uh, a presidential petition, for instance, is such an urgent matter for for the country that the judge should give in just for two hours, you know, maybe three hours or maybe half a day and make up for the rest of the day. What is your take on this? <laughs> there is a huge distinction between uh, uh, a cow f f falling into a bit and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the Sabbath, I mean work scheduled for the Sabbath. A, a cow falling into a bit, you are, you are relieving pain if it has not died. Mm -hmm. You are living, uh, I mean, it is a matter of life and death. Just like you would, uh, if you were going to church and you, you found an accident and people have been injured, uh, you, 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 re you rescue them, take them to hospital yeah, and, and, and do what you can to alleviate their pain. Mm -hmm. A presidential petition, I agree, it is an urgent matter. It has a time-bound, what we call a time-bound jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, it must be hard and determined within 14 days. In fact, the time, the, the period left for the court to hear that petition and complete it, it's like uh, three days. And, and, and I have no problem about that because, they, I mean, I will not sit on, on, on Sabbath, as I told the Judicial Service Commission. Yeah. Uh, because, my, I mean, uh, my, uh, the, the sitting on the Sabbath, that is a scheduled work. That mm -hmm. is a scheduled work. Mm -hmm. It's not an emergency. Mm -hmm. Like now we are thinking about it and it's going to be somewhere in, in, in September next year, mm -hmm. if, it, if it will be filed. Mm -hmm. and, and in my view, it is something you can easily organize and, and you do it. Uh, and as I said, as I told the Judicial Service Commission, if I'm appointed, I will speak to, I will arrange with my colleagues well in advance 
so that we sit late on the other days, yes. even up to eight o'clock, mm -hmm. nine o'clock, and and we and we we, we rest on Sabbath, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they will accommodate me. Mm -hmm. I can't see anything so difficult about that. Mm -hmm. That's why I see no problem at all in my view about that. Okay. Yes. And my second question on the issue of the Sabbath is uh, the freedom of worship. In in the I mean, not just in the recent past, but there have been cases, sporadic cases, of situations where some, perhaps children, let me say, because they may not make decisions on their own, although it is enshrined in the Constitution that there is the freedom of worship, you would find that there are cases, especially in educational institutions, where young people are forced to go for classes on Sabbath. Um, how can these people be helped? Because the Constitution states it, but I know of cases where students are still expelled from schools for standing for God mm -hmm. and that Sabbath worship. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> for me, that is, that's not right. The Constitution... Um, gives freedom of uh, worship. I, 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 I was privileged to represent the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the drafting of the Constitution, Article yes. 32 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. If you read it, uh, I mean, you will see the freedom of worship even on a day. I can't remember the exact wording. We are the ones who put that with, I remember it vividly with the uh, uh, Mrs. Moniki, mm -hmm. she's, she's, she's a one of our members. Yes. We put that in the constitution and it was carried. So they, our children have freedom of worship, especially in public schools. There is no reason whatsoever why they should be denied the, 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 the right to worship because it is in there in the constitution. Uh, and and, and the, the information we have, as, as an elder of Central Church, we, 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 we go to quite a number of uh, secondary schools around here. Mm -hmm. The information we have is that our children are among the ones doing very well yes. in schools in yes. spite of not going to classes on Sabbath. Yes. And we have used that as a, as a, as a case to argue out the case to, 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 the, to, the, to the heads of schools to tell them, to, look, there's really no need to, to uh, force these children to yes. come and worship, on, I mean, to, to come to class on, on Sabbath yes. against their will. I mean, when somebody has had enough, in fact, even if you think about it, when you have had a complete 24 hours rest, yes. your mind is rejuvenated. Yes, you are more refreshed. You are refreshed <laughs> and you are able to, to work and, and do uh, better. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an issue that uh, uh, can be taken. I was happy the Minister for Education uh, is, is talking uh, very, very ardently about it, mm. that schools should not force uh, our children to go to class on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They should be led to, to worship. Mm -hmm. It's a matter which is being taken up by, by the Minister of Education and, uh, and we, will, uh, we will assist wherever we can mm -hmm. to ensure that these children are, are, are allowed to worship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our children are among the best behaved in schools. Th that one we have been told. Mm -hmm. So we are, our argument is, you, you are not bringing up, uh, look, we are not just looking, the child is not a question of uh, the academic performance alone. Mm -hmm. There is a lot that goes into a child. If you can get a child to be brought up in church and he avoids drugs, which are a problem in the country these days, mm -hmm. what better thing could you do? Then allow these children to go to church and worship. Church, we worship there. We teach our children to tell them, look, these are acts like these are evil. Mm. Shun them, and they tell even your friends not to get anywhere near. Mm. And 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 what what better is does the society want than that? Mm. Even if one is not an Adventist, and you are you are you are telling children not to shun to shun drugs to shun. Uh, alcohol and things like that. Mm -hmm. that. That's what should be encouraged by all. Mm -hmm. And whenever we have argued with the, the heads of institutions, quite a number of them have seen reason mm -hmm. and have agreed with us and we thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Elder, why did you, were you interested in the position of Chief Justice? Because I guess it quite involving mm -hmm. and uh, quite controversial to some extent like some of the issues you have raised yes. and uh, if the Lord gave you the opportunity which we want to trust God for 
uh, it might call on you to really really face lots of uh, controversial issues although yes. they are not controversial as the constitution states very clearly but you will stand out as somebody who has certain values that perhaps can be challenged by society uh, why did you have an interest in this very key <laughs> position in this country yes uh, I meet all the qualifications yes. first and foremost yeah I have the experience yes and uh, I, I I thought I'm claiming uh, God is uh, promises. Yes. Like the one in Deuteronomy 28, verse 13. Mm -hmm. That his children will be at the top yes. and not at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So he said, here is a position uh, for the top position, the judiciary. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, and I, 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 I meet the qualifications. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, besides that, I have the urge to serve the Kenyans. There are a few things that are going on. We are having cases b b bending in court yes. for 10, 15, 20, and some of them even longer than that. Mm -hmm. and, and quite a few things that I have seen not going right in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. If I am in a position of authority, mm -hmm. I am sure I will push those ones uh, forward. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, being interviewed, I said, if given this opportunity, by the time I leave uh, in another four years, all the cases, more than two years, will have been behind us. Yes. And that's not an idle promise I made because I wanted this position. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I get it, I'm sure I will be able to manage that. And I have a vision for that. I, I have plans for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, I, if I get it, I, I will be able to do that. And if I'm able to do that, I will leave a mark in the country. Mm -hmm. Because I know of our people who have suffered for many, many years with cases in court. Mm -hmm. Some of those cases have affected the, the economy of the country. Mm -hmm. And we should move forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. But someone would say already you're in a very influential position. Uh, I, so are you talking of perhaps improving the structures so that uh, there is faster facilitation in terms of how the cases are handled? Are you adding staff? What is it that you do to make it work faster so that you clear the backlog of cases? Yes. I, I, will, um, I will engage the central government and tell them, look, if you don't give us money, when the people complain, they should know who to direct the complaint to. Yes. Because the, the judiciary budget uh, is supposed, I mean, the, 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 the ideal judiciary budget in, in, in most countries is supposed to be 2.5% of the national budget. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan judiciary mm -hmm. budget for the, like this year is 0.9. That's very little. Very, very little. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think it's, it's sometimes because of... Uh, not fully appreciating what the judiciary is doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, Parliament is not allocating, uh, I mean, enough money. I'm not saying that Parliament should have allocated 2.5% uh, uh, immediately, mm -hmm. because we have also to look at the, 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 the economic status of the country. Yes. Uh, but then, if <coughs> they are synthesized and told what we need that money for, Yeah. They will. They will. Uh, I'm sure they will respond positively. Mm -hmm. The reason, one of the major reasons why we have a problem with the cases pending in court for mm -hmm. a very long time, mm -hmm. is uh, the, the 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 shortage of judges and magistrates to hear those cases. Yes. Uh, so with enough facilitation uh, funds, we should be able to employ enough to yes. to, to deal with that. Mm -hmm. The other one is the uh, the the use of technology. Mm -hmm. You know, we, our proceedings are, are manual. Yes. We, we, are, we are moving at a snail's pace. <laughs> when other countries have already uh, advanced and are moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, using technology requires a lot of funds, requires training and all that. And that's what I have in mind. That if we, 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 we were to move and, and get enough funds from the government, mm. in the judiciary we will move on. In fact, this morning I was having a breakfast meeting discussing that issue okay. to, 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 to see how we are going to get um, uh, recorders mm -hmm. 
during the hearing of, of, of some cases so that they move fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's something I am, I'm, 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 uh, I'm very interested mm -hmm. in, in seeing and I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic yes. that if I'm in that position, mm -hmm. I will be able to influence uh, uh, and, and get enough funds to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. My last question is really about your family life. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> I have met your wife before in different forums, and I know you have children. And uh, so, how do you strike this balance between your busy schedule and and family? And for instance, you did mention that you have moved to different stations, yes. unlike before when you had private practice. Yes. How 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 does how do you cope with all this? Mm, well, I must admit it's it's quite a challenge. It's, it's quite a challenge. Uh, uh, but then. I, I know it. It, 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 it. I must make time for my family. Yeah. I'm, I'm one person. I'm an early riser. Uh, I go home. In fact, in most cases, like when I was working in Nairobi, in most cases, by, by 5, 6 o'clock, I am at home. And I'm with my family until the following day. Okay. During the weekend, we are, we are together. On, here, we come to church. We, I mean, we are together with my wife and children, those who are around. Uh, and and uh, we 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 deal with uh, we we move on. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose anybody who is employed mm -hmm. uh, cannot have uh, all the a time for the family. Yes, there, there must be a balance. Mm -hmm. I have not had a problem balancing that at all. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. And and issues of socialization. You seem to be quite sociable. Yes. Uh, and uh, like today we made a quick call through your church pastor. Yes. And you came, but you know, in some cases there would be people in your position that would really feel like you know they should really give me you know you belong to a certain class. How how does that come about? What makes you so <laughs> humble and so approachable? I don't know. I think it's a, the, the Christian values that have been uh, inculcul inculcated in me. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, you know, okay, and I've not been told that in church alone. Mm -hmm. Even my colleagues, my, my people I work with, uh, say, look, you, you are approachable. You are say, I say, I mean, for me, it surprises me when somebody says you are approachable. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder how else would I have uh, worked. <laughs> because, I, I mean, it, it, is, it, it comes almost naturally. Mm -hmm. I, when you are a Christian, you 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 learn humility, mm -hmm. and you espouse values like those. Mm -hmm. With time, they become part of you, and, and you find that you're not struggling to to to, to talk to somebody, to talk to to anybody. You are not struggling to 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 to, to talk to your messenger. You are not struggling to talk to your driver. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's not an issue for me. Mm -hmm. It's not. I find don't find it an issue at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have an, any favorite verse that uh, makes your day? Yes. Psalms twenty three. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, and and he has he has taken me over situations. If I tell you, like this interview, I did. Mm -hmm. I know people were praying for me. I'm sure you were one of those who were praying for me. Yeah. When I went into that room, the answers which came to my head, just like that, and I answered them. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that God gave me those answers. Mm -hmm. There are some I didn't have, and they just came. Okay, I couldn't have remembered easily, but they just came. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I thank God for knowing him. Amen. I wouldn't be what I am without, without God. Amen. I don't think I would have even been uh, employed in the judiciary mm -hmm. if I didn't, if I was not in church and, and I fear God. And I have respect among my colleagues, mm -hmm. have respect among those who work uh, under me. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. That's not something I take for granted, no. Yes, no. that's true. Yeah. We have been talking to Justice David Maraga, a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and an elder of the church. And he serves this country, Kenya. And he has parted with very good words. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. 
that's a good note to end the program today. We look forward to having Elder again. Thank you. Elder, we want you to come and educate the Kenyans on legal issues. I would we love thank to God do that. for you. I would we do pray that. for you if it's God's will. Yes. We know that if that job is yours, he'll give it to you. Thanks. But wherever he sends you, yes. continue serving him. Thank you. God bless you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.